Um, we're going to have a follow-up class on the same topic that, uh, that Chabelle was just preaching on, on this concept of dancing. And what do we really see in the Bible about dancing? Um, what is a, a Christian's... I guess in God's eyes, what is a Christian's obligation to or not to? What is approved in God's eyes when it comes to dancing or not dancing? Uh, is it all wrong? Is some of it wrong? Is none of it wrong? Uh, those type of questions is what what we're talking about and what we're going to try to uh, look at and maybe develop our thinking and our attitudes towards uh, how our life should be as Christians uh, in regards to dancing. And so, again, this is a class. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I don't know that I have all the answers, uh, but maybe between Chabelle and I, we can at least uh, talk about some scriptures that may be applicable to whatever question you have. Um, all right. In the lesson we, we just had uh, on dancing, what did we see or what did we learn? What applications can we make today? What questions uh, do we still have uh, about dancing? You know, uh, we went through uh, some positive connotations. There are examples in the, in the Bible where dancing is mi mentioned uh, in a posit positive light, uh, sometimes in a neutral light, definitely not in a negative light uh, when you see those examples of dancing uh, that we looked at, um, we see that the, the positive connotations many times involved happiness, uh, joyfulness, merrymaking, uh, people dancing because they were happy or joyous. Um, we see Old Testament examples of people praising God with dance. Um, we see New Testament references to dancing because of joyfulness and a, you know, in a positive light. Uh, and Chabelle uh, mentioned that uh, you know, in the New Testament, one thing we don't see is any example or anything prescribed about us in our worship service and dancing and Christians. Uh, any form of dancing being involved with praising or worshiping God in our services, and, and that you know, because we don't see anything like that, you know, that's something that we can't take the liberty to do. Um, so I appreciate that point. Uh, some negative connotations of dancing in the Bible. Uh, he had the example in Exodus 32, uh, you know, where the Israelites were dancing. Uh, it, it seemed like it was a big party. Uh, we see examples of revelries uh, and lasciviousness in the Old Testament. And, um, and in the New Testament, we see that example that he brought up, that's often brought up about uh, Herodias' daughter dancing and dancing. Uh, that you know that was the beginning of steps that led to John the Baptist uh, being beheaded. Uh, so you know again we see positive and negative connotations of dancing in the Bible, Old and uh, in the New Testament. So what about us as Christians? Uh, Christians and dancing. What can or should we be doing? Uh, now there's there's many many kinds of dancing uh, in in the world today. Many kinds. I, I googled how many types of dances are there, and basically it came up with this list. You could click on the letter A, and there was about 50, and the letter B, and there was about 50. You know, it's hundreds, if not thousands, of types of dances today uh, that are recognized as dances. Uh, can a Christian be involved with all of them, or can a Christian be involved with any of them? You know, there are some things that I think we need to consider when thinking about that question. Alright, turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, Gary, if you don't mind, please read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 19, verses 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with the Christ, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, so here in this passage, Paul's telling the Corinthians what? Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, in a sense. Uh, that we are bought with a price, and we should do what with our body and our spirit? Glorify Him, all right, with our body and our spirit. Okay, so the things that we do with our body, with our spirit, should glorify Him. 
Um, Robert, would you read First Peter two, four, and five, please? And then also verses eleven and twelve. I'm coming to him. <laughs> As to a living stone which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Okay, and then 11 and 12. Please. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly, fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may be because of your good deeds, and as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. Alright, um, so we can see from those two uh, passages, one, we are chosen by God as precious living stones, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. That goes along with us. Uh, being the temple of God, and what we read uh, in the passage in Corinthians. Uh, in verses 11 and 12, Peter goes on to say we should abstain from flesh, fleshly lusts, uh, and that we should have our conduct honorable among outsiders, so that they will glorify God because of the good works, the good things that they see us doing in our life. So, you know, those are some things we need to consider uh, when we're thinking about this subject of dance. <coughs> All right, Mark, if you wouldn't mind, read uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 12, please. And again, if y'all have any comments or questions, just raise your hand or kind of jump in because I'm going to be moving pretty quick through this because I think I'm going to run out of time. Finally then, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us instruction as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you excel still more. For you know what commandment we gave you by the authority of the, Lord, of the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is, that you abstain from sexual morality, immorality, and that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God, and that no man transgress and defraud his brother in the matter of because the Lord is the avenger in all these things, just as we also told you before and solemnly warned you. For God was not, has not called us for the purpose of impurity, but in sanctification. So he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but the God who, give, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now as, the love of, now as to the love of the brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed, you do practice it toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. We urge you, brethren, to excel still more. And to make it your ambition to live a quiet life and attend to your own business and work with your hands, just as we commanded you, so that you will behave properly toward outsiders and not be in any need. All right, so that's kind of a long passage, but there's a lot for us to uh, consider in that passage in, in regards to our subject. Um, it starts off there telling us how to walk to please God, how our Christian walk to, should be if we're going to be pleasing to God. Uh, we see that one of the things our, our Christian walk has to have is, is that, and, and that our sanctification, what sets us apart, what sets us aside for God, is that we abstain from sexual immorality. Um, also says that uh, us as Christians need to know how to possess our own bodies in sanctification and honor. Um, so, you know, we need to know how to possess ourselves in sanctification and honor. How we set ourselves aside for God and honor God with our body, with the things that we do in our body. Uh, and we see that it's not to be in passion of lust. Uh, we also see that we're called to holiness. That goes along with the idea of sanctification and honor. Uh, and then at the end of that passage, we see again, uh, reiterated what we read a minute ago, that we're to walk properly towards those who are on the outside. Uh, what people see us doing and participating in matters. Uh, it, it should be something that's proper uh, and, and is an example to them of what is right. And where they see 
Right, right. And where they see you also. Um, <clears throat> Alright, 1 Thessalonians 5. You just look in the next chapter. Uh, Carrie, would you mind reading 19 through 22, please? Examine everything carefully. <laughs> Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Alright, so um, some things in that passage for us to consider. Do not quench the spirit or despise prophecies or teachings, basically, is what uh, Paul is saying there. You know, don't quench the spirit. Don't water down. Don't try to cover up or, 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 or squash out uh, the spirit, the teachings that God has given us. Uh, and don't despise the teachings that God has given us. We have, we've talked about that in here uh, a good bit about having the right attitude that we hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we want to know what God's will is in certain matters. And then uh, verse 22, uh, this is a passage that uh, I guess evidently my mom drilled this into my head as a kid because I, I rely on this passage a lot in, in decision making on things where I might not be sure about what the right way to do is abstain from every form of evil. Uh, does that cover a lot or a little? It covers a lot. Uh, that can really be a broad, that's a broad statement there. Uh, but it covers a lot. And that, that's, a, that's a good thing for us to fall back on um, <clears throat> uh, when considering subjects that, that we may be having difficulty discerning what God's will is. Uh, What's difficult there is this idea of being aware of the sensibilities of the people around, right? And and responding to that, you know, it's uh, uh, that's a pretty unselfish thing to do, you know, to, to make the effort to know, you know, to know what other people think, then to care what they think, and then to adjust your own your lifestyle. In to yeah, to, uh, you know. For their best interest and not just to do what you want. That's right. Uh, Kimberly, would you mind reading Romans 6, please? 11 through 14. <laughs> Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mind that you should obey it in its lust. Uh, do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Alright, so you know, in that passage we can see we're to present ourselves as members of righteousness to God. Uh, not as members of sin, uh, not as, as members who are obeying or following after fleshly lusts. Uh, we're supposed to be the opposite of that as Christians. We present ourselves as, as members of righteousness to God. That's, that should be um, the picture people see of us and what we're doing in our lives. Alright, um, there's a term, Chabelle mentioned it uh, in his lesson, and, and there's a, I think this is really a key thing to think about uh, when you're talking about dancing. Um, and, and a Christian's involvement in dancing. There's, in the New King James, it's oftentimes uh, mentioned as lewdness. In the Old King James, it'll be uh, lasciviousness. Um, but it's a lot. Old Testament and New Testament, we see this, this term, these terms or these ideas uh, mentioned. Uh, and it's never in a positive light. It's never something that someone who's approved of God should be involved in. Uh, the definition of it uh, is being very sexual or lustful in an offensive way, uh, inciting or causing lust. Uh, if you look at Strong's uh, definition, you see filthy and wantonness. Uh, basically, it's the idea of, of uh, uh, carrying yourself in a way uh, that may cause lust or sexual thoughts in others or, or uh, in yourself or someone uh, you may be participating in something with. Um, and so that's something that we need to, to think about and understand because it's really paramount, I think, in understanding uh, what a Christian can do with dancing or cannot do with dancing. All right. Um, Mark chapter 7. These are all passages that, that mention this idea of lewdness or lasciviousness. Uh, Jerry, would you mind reading Mark 7, 20 through 23, please? <laughs> Okay. 
Mark 7, 23-23. And he said, What comes out of man that defiles a man? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covenants, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blaspheming, pride, foolishness. All these <coughs> evil things come from within and defile a man. Okay, so we see here um, that what defiles us originates in our heart and leads us to doing things uh, that are unpleasing to God. Um, a couple of the things mentioned here are fornication and lewdness are, are two of the things mentioned. Uh, Romans 8, would you mind 2 Corinthians 12, 21, please? I didn't mean to skip you. You can do uh, Galatians 5, 19. Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. Okay, so we see Paul uh, saying that there are some there who have not repented for the uh, sins they've committed and fornication and lewdness again mentioned. Um, and remember what we said the definition of lewdness is. Right. Each, Galatians 5. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, and, and lighties, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, confessions, factions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would have a different version. <laughs> you missed my word, lewdness. Oh, uh, read those again in verse 19. I, did, I didn't catch it when you said it. This going to be something that along the same lines. Um, now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery. All right, the sensuality, I think, would be the word there that, that would go along with the same idea of lewdness or or lasciviousness, uh, the idea of sensuality. Um, Alright, uh, Adrian, would you mind Ephesians chapter 4? Ephesians chapter 4, uh, 17 through 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 24. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto, I cannot say that, <laughs> lasciviousness, um, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the <coughs> deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God has created righteousness and true holiness. Alright, so what can we gain from that passage? We see that the old man, or the Gentile way of life, as uh, Paul's referring to it there, was given to what? Given to lewdness. Um, uh, and the new man understands what? what? If you put on Christ, if you put on the new man, what do you understand about that? Uh, yeah, that's something Christians are not involved with. Uh, the new man doesn't do that. The new man doesn't participate in that. Um, put off the old. Right, because you put off the old man. You put that away. That's part of what uh, your repentance is, is uh, involved with that. All right, and then in First Peter um, chapter four, we already read that one. Is that a different? Uh, Chabelle, would you mind reading that? Yes, sir. I may have done a little bit. For as much then as Christ is suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? 
For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. All right, so again, Peter here is saying uh, the new man has moved beyond these things. Uh, we've spent enough of our time doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness and in lusts and drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. Um, and he goes on to say, you know, again, the new man has to move beyond that. If you're going to be a follower of Christ, you, you've got to cease from that uh, and move on to, to more holy things. Uh, I mean, that's one of those passages. I mean, I know I've been in classes like that before, and folks always want to say, "Well, you know, it's like <laughs> I want my kids to be able to be normal. You know, I want my kids to go to the prom. Right, I want right. my kids to be able to do all the things that other kids do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they don't say it that way. You know, that's not usually the way you hear that expressed, but." You know, it's they go at this from the standpoint of trying to excuse as much as possible. Right. Yes, yeah, that's right. And we saw in that passage of Peter that you know people are supposed to think it's strange that you're not involved with those types of things. Right. And that and that's what I say. You look, you look at all of that. I mean, it's like well, so you have that conversation. Well, my my little girl, she's not going to wear. She's not going to buy a dress just like that. The other one. Or she's not going. Or my, you know, my little boy, he's not going right. to go there and right. do what the other little boys are doing. Well, what you're saying is the other little girls and boys that are going to be there, <laughs> they all doing something that you don't approve of. This is, you know, that's what this thing is for. Right. But we're going to participate. But we're going to participate in it like it's okay. You know, that's, that's, there again, that, that goes back into this thing, you know, am I trying to seek approval from men or am I trying to seek approval from God? You know, am I trying to fit in? Right, right. I mean, what what are we what are we trying to do here? Mm -hmm. And it's like you know, like you hear those people say, Well, I, you know, my favorite band is playing down at the bar and you know but the the world I mean, you know, you had several verses where it talked about you know it matters what other people think. Right. Right. And you know, I, it matters where your car is parked. You know, mm -hmm. people like to say, "Well, I can go anywhere I want to go, and I can do anything I want to do as a Christian, as long as I'm not participating in this or that." That's not true. Right. Um. Okay. One question. So, are we? Well, are are you saying that going to the prom is wrong because there may be? people there who are not particularly doing what they should should be doing? Um, yeah, I'm going to say we're going to get into why that's something a Christian should not do as we go into this. We're going to get into the, what the problems would be of going to something like a school dance. Um, and so, just hang on and we'll get, we're gonna get to that, okay? Alright, um, so, uh, you read Chabelle. Miss Lois, would you mind reading Romans 13, 11 through 14? And then, let's pay attention to this passage. I think this is a uh, <clears throat> this is a pretty applicable passage to the topic we're looking at. I think, um, and so let's pay attention to this. Okay, Romans 13, 11 through 14, please. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for me to wake up from the slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in the carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immortality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay, um, so what do we see? What are some things we see in this passage? Um, start with, we see that uh, it's high time for us to awake out of sleep. Uh, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Um, and then in verse 12, let us cast off the works of darkness, put on the armor of light. Verse 13, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness, not in lust, not in strife, and not in envy. Um, 
So we see that walking properly, part of that is not in lewdness and not in lust. Um, and then verse 14, I think, again, I think this is really an applicable passage. It says, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. What does that mean? To make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Miss Lois has read a little bit different. Um, but the same idea carries. Then you stay out of harm's way. See, it, stay out of harm's way. Uh, if you're not making provisions to fulfill uh, something that's evil like lust, that means you're you're paying attention and, and you're making decisions that will keep you away from situations that may cause you to lust. Uh, an example of that, you know, uh, if you're in charge of hiring a secretary, who are you hire? Or right. you know, if you're in charge, are you going? You know, where are you going to go <coughs> in the car with the female co co-worker? All, you know, all those kind of things. You got all those things. Are you making, are you protecting yourself ahead of right. time from trouble? Even your reputation. Are you worried about protecting your reputation, which the Lord says is valuable? Right. Are you, I mean, are you making provision to be the person and to be viewed the person who's going to be effective in promoting God's kingdom? Right. Um, and so, you know, I think an application that we can gain from this is that, and we're going to develop this thought a little bit more, but anything that we do uh, that may cause us or someone else to fulfill the flesh or its lusts would be sinful. Uh, you know, if, if we put ourselves in a situation uh, that, is, that is causing us to be lusted or could cause to be lustful uh, or could cause someone else uh, to lust, then that would be sinful for us to be involved in that. So we're going to develop that a little bit more. All right. Um, what are some practical things for us to consider? Uh, what kind of dancing are you doing? Uh, again, there's many, many dances uh, in the world today. And uh, many of them involve doing things that a Christian should not be doing. Uh, you know, we see this in the world all around us. We see it on TV. We see it on commercials. We, we, we're surrounded by it every day. Uh, we may even become a little in, uh, desensitized to it because we're so surrounded by it. But we see immodest dress uh, is one of the things that are associated uh, with, with types of dancings that dances and things that Christians I should not be involved with, you know, uh, people that are dressed in a way that draw attention uh, to the wrong parts of their body, uh, or draw attention to themselves in the wrong way. Uh, we see movements that uh, mimic sexual behaviors. Uh, we see, you know, these dances uh, are designed and are done in a way that stimulate our mind in a sexual way. They cause us or lead us towards lustful thoughts. And, and, they, they take our mind in a direction that a Christian's mind does not need to go in. Uh, and it's not just a Christian's mind. You're responsible. Right, for right. We're going to get into thing. Yeah, that's what we're going to get into also. You know, it's not just your mind. It's, it's if you're participating in these things, you're causing someone else a problem. You know, those things uh, are doing the same thing. They, they may or may not be doing that to a Christian's mind. A Christian may be able to say, that doesn't affect me, but you don't know what the person standing next to you. It's, it's an important thing that a daddy or a mama or an older woman or somebody explains to the young ladies. You know, bo boys ain't like you. Right. And they don't that's think it. like you. That's exactly right. And, they're, and you know, you, you can cause problems if you don't know that. I mean, right. it's, it's, it may be innocent on your part, but it ain't, it, the result ain't no different. Just because you did it ignorantly. Or whatever. That's right. Um, all right, so what does dancing, if we're talking about dancing in a way, you know, with immodest dress and, and, and immodest moves and those kind of things, uh, what does that do, uh, just from a basic standpoint? Well, it incites lustful thoughts among those doing it and those watching it. Not just those doing it, those watching it also. Uh, you know, if we've done that, if, if we participated in that and, and uh, caused lustful thoughts uh, among ourselves or among someone who was watching, then we've caused someone to stumble. And we know that that's not something Christians could do. That would be a sin. Um, if we dress in a way 
that reveals too much or in a way that it draws that draws no. attention to our bodies in the wrong way, then we have sinned again because um, we have caused or given occasion for someone to lust after us, caused a stumbling in their uh, on their behalf, basically. Um, if we dance in a way that causes lustful thoughts or that stimulates someone's mind in a sexual way or bends it towards sexual thoughts, uh, then we have sinned. Uh, and again, we're talking about, you know, kind of some practical things that we need to consider when talking about a Christian's involvement with dance. Um, so what about dances? You know, Chevelle kind of brought this up. We're talking about all the different types of dances. What about the waltz? The samba, the mamba, and the karate chop, whatever it is. Um, you know, my answer to that would be, have you ever seen the show Dancing with the Stars? You know, that's, that show basically covers a lot of these other type of dances. Um, not all, it, uh, Obviously, it's not an all-inclusive in deal, but, you know, uh, on that show, it's not the, the bumping and grinding club type dances that we often think of that everybody knows is wrong. It's these other type dances that are your more classical type dances that people would generally want to try to uh, excuse or, or say that they're okay. Uh, but what's really going on uh, in those type dances and on that show? Uh, you end up having unmarried couples dancing these type of dances together and modestly dressed uh, moving in a, a sexually stimulating way you know if you've ever watched it it's steamy and sultry stimulating and and it's sinful because of the thoughts and desires that it prompts in the dancers and the viewers so you know just because it's not some uh, real grimy club type dance doesn't mean it's an okay dance uh, you know there's things to consider uh, about what's really going on there when you boil it down. Uh, are these type things what we saw and read that a Christian's walk is supposed to be defined as? It's not. No. Alright, what about school dances and party dances and club dances? Again, boil it down and think about what it is that you're doing and approving of. Um, you're encouraging unmarried people to have impure sexual thoughts and desires. That's, that's one of the things that happens at these type situations. Um, you know, usually there's a lot of folks dressed in uh, revealing immodest ways that draw attention and stimulate the mind in a negative way. Uh, there's close touching and contact with people of the opposite sex in a sensual way. Again, unmarried people. Uh, there's types of dances that mimic sexual behaviors, uh, you know, and that's undoubtedly sexually stimulating to those uh, participating and watching. Uh, again, leading us down this path of lustful thoughts and lewd behavior and, and, and impure thoughts that a Christian should not be having or, or really be involved with. All right, remember what we read in that passage in Romans uh, about casting off darkness about walking properly and about making no provision for the flesh. Um, the passage in 1 Corinthians we read said to flee sexual immorality, not flirt with it, flee it, get away from it, don't be involved in that. Um, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Nope. Nope. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 20 and 21, or 21 and 22. Uh, says, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Our goal, again, as Christians... Our goal is to be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful to the Master, uh, prepared for every good work. We see that we're supposed to flee youthful lusts and pursue righteousness. Uh, so those are all things that I think are applicable to, to our question this morning. Um, all right, what about married people? You know, I've mentioned a couple times uh, that, that a lot of the problems we see in this dancing is uh, that it's involved with unmarried people. Uh, can can married people dance? Uh, you know, what's the answer to that question? Look in First Corinthians chapter seven.
First Corinthians chapter 7. <clears throat> Gary, would you mind reading uh, 1 through 9, please? Got me? Yes. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. <clears throat> let the husband render to his, to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. Come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But I say this as a concession, not as a command. For I wish that all men were even as myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in his manner and another in, in this manner and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widow, it is good for them if they remain as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with them. Alright, so here Paul kind of uh, gives us some insight on the, the marriage relationship and what's going on there. Uh, he starts off saying, uh, first, that, that it's good for a man not to touch a woman, but, uh, and then he goes on to explain, because of the strong uh, desire of sexual immorality, it's better to marry than to burn with passion. Um, so we, you know, we can derive from that that within the marriage relationship, within the scriptural context of, you know, of a scriptural marriage relationship, lust for one another in that context is normal and acceptable, and, and, it, and it's approved by God. Um, look at uh, in Hebrews. We won't read this, but Hebrews chapter thirteen and verse four tells us that marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. Um, again. Sexual feelings and activities towards one another in the pri in privacy is perfectly okay. God has given us this relationship. Um, all right, so what about married people dancing around others? Uh, remember what we read about Christians can't be doing anything that is lewd or that causes others to lust or be stimulated. Um, you know, we don't always know what may cause this, so it's good for us to be extra careful and not to cause other to, others to stumble. You know, my, my answer to this question of, of married people dancing uh, in public is, you know, are the, the dances that you're doing or the things that you're doing um, causing others to lust? Is, is it appropriate or inappropriate? Is it giving occasion for someone to stumble or not? Is it setting the right example or not? You know, those are things that we need to think about uh, when considering this question. Um, you know, think about the verses we read that call us to be holy, sanctified, to walk properly, to abstain from every appearance of evil, and to present ourselves as members of righteousness to God. Uh, you know, all those things are things that we should think about in answering this question. Um, any comments about that or questions? I have one question, and let me first say I happen to be one of those people that don't really care about dance. I guess I'm one of those people that's just not normal with that, like I'm not normal with a lot of stuff. But anyway, as people can pick up the book, and people have done it in the past and will do it in the future, and they'll go to the specific passages, and then some of us... Don't even be the new those passages will send the book since I don't know why people don't be in total of everything. But anyway, <coughs> just considering dance when we tell people all of what we they can't do, when they ask what kind of dance can they do, what do we tell them? Right. Um, you know, I would think, and again, uh, there's definitely some discernment involved in this, but you know, I think from the passages that you looked at uh, in your lesson, and you know, and if we look at all of this stuff fairly, um, the real danger, the real wrong, where you get into wrong with dancing is when you get into this idea of lewdness and uh, and causing lust in others. And I think it, it's very important that we be ultra careful because you don't know what may cause that. Uh, it, I think it's wise to be very cautious in that. As far as dances you can participate in, I mean, I don't, 
I'm not gonna sit here and give you a list, but uh, I mean, in my mind, like when you see kids dancing together, just because they're happy and jumping around dancing, what could be? I don't see anything that could be sinful about that. You know, they don't even have the this type of sexual thoughts that adults have. Um, now again, there, there's there's concepts of modesty and and how you move your body and carry yourself that you need to be teaching your kids, but. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what comments did you I have. I was just going to say, I mean, like, a lot of the times when you see, like, with David, you know, there's this victory. You right. know, with, you think about when they announce the end of World War One or World War Two. you know, what are people doing in the streets? Right, it, right. great burden's been lifted. It's just an expression of likeness. In other words, right. it's not an expression of these other things. Right, and that's and, what and I that, said. that's what I'm saying, in other words, you know, but how often you don't plan those things. Those things are spontaneous. You see what I'm saying? Right. You don't make a plan that that's going to happen. You know, right. like these yeah. dancing parts, like if the purpose is to get together and do these things, it's general. <coughs> you know, their purposes are a little different. You know, but, but those, you see David's, I think of him as being spontaneous. You know, here's the art coming back. I'm very happy. You know, it's right. just like the burden's been lifted. You know, here we are. But, you know that that's a you know what what are the occasions that you're going to have that come about? You know what I mean? Right. You know, how, how many and times I, is I mean, the war over in your life, or how many times does art come back, or you know what I mean? It's just there are not going to be a whole lot of occasions for it. Doesn't seem like. Now, to, to be but, fair though, there there, there are occasions in there when being planned like that feast that Shiloh. Right. I was thinking so that, that that's why I always say be and you got to, again I think you know in those situations when I think of dancing and again this is just going to come down to discernment and some of this and, and personal opinion I guess but when I think of dancing when I was preparing this lesson thinking okay what what would be okay um have you ever seen Mary Poppins you know <laughs> I mean uh, you know the dances I see on there and again I, I didn't go watch it again and think of every dance move or anything but you know those are just more joyous type happy type uh, dances nothing uh, sexual lewd lustful about any of that um, again I think our dress has a lot to do with it how we move our bodies carry our bodies those type things uh, are very paramount and that is where we can quickly get into uh, types of dancing that are sinful and wrong. Um, like the athletic stuff for me, everybody's impressed. You know, the things that people can do are just amazing. I've seen some of those guys like Brazilians doing those uh, dancing, you know, very athletic right, right. kind of stuff. And I'm, I tell you, I'm fascinated by that. Or, you know, some right. of the, like Chabelle talked about the athletes in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Right. Fascinating. Lots of training, physical ability. It's got to do with dress or what you know, whatever. It's right. not it's right. not it's not uh, what they're doing in that situation. It's more got to do with, you know, maybe how they're dressed or carrying yeah, themselves. Like yeah, but it's, you know, just the, the expression of athletic ability or something like that ain't nothing here ain't nothing in here right. wrong with that. It's just often what you see there in the situation is that they're just pretty much not dressed. Right. And that, you know, that's the conclusion really that I that I tried to draw here is that, you know, any dancing which involves immodest dress, sexual mu movements which uh, may stimulate the mind in a sexual way or cause lustful thoughts in those dancing or, wa or watching the dance, that would be sinful without a doubt. I mean, the scriptures would clearly prove that. Um, we see this concept of us fleeing, not flirting with the lust of the flesh. Um, something that we should get away from, head the other direction. Don't, don't try to, you know, be walking right on the edge of, hey, I'm not doing wrong, but I'm as close to it as I can get. Don't flirt with that. Get away from it. Uh, we should make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Again, flee it. Don't make it harder on yourself or on others. If you do, you're not following that commandment about not making provisions for the flesh. You're you're, uh, you're not really guarding yourself like you do. Um, um, final thoughts? Or the passage? Mm -hmm. So, I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm getting everything. So, okay. there were two things that I heard them kind of confused on. So, you you were making a point about school dances. Like, right. that they were promoting 
um, that they were pretty much promoting wrong. I mean, I don't think that they create those dances in order to promote, okay, the kids are going to, you know, dance together and they're going to dance wrongly. I, I don't know if they're promoting the, the dance for, for those purposes. And most of the time they have people regulating to make sure that, you know, students are not getting out of hand or doing things that aren't supposed to be doing. Um, and with that, you mentioned kids, and there are kids' school dances, and when you're in elementary, most of them, are, they're scared to talk to each other, so um, that was one thing. And then you also have, you know, you have, you have father-daughter dances and mother-son dances, and those are planned events as well, so it was also mentioned that they were not planned, that they were sporadic, so are we saying that we can't have planned events that dancing is involved with? Mm, no, I think <laughs> as far as the point, the point he was making about the spontaneous stuff is, is that uh, a lot of the examples we see of dancing mm -hmm. are more spontaneous, joyous celebration. Okay. Uh, you know, that, that just kind of happens. Uh, as far as like the school dances, again, you know, I understand, you know, the teachers and the, the principals aren't getting together saying let's plan this activity for all of these students to, you know, to have the chance to do this with each other, uh, to do this, to be involved with these lustful thoughts and that kind of thing, but I also understand what goes on there. You know, they may not have planned that for that reason, but that goes on there. Uh, not everybody's doing that there, but some of that goes on there. Uh, you know, just the, the concept that it does need to be regulated throws up a flag in a sense, you know, that, that, that there could be some problems with that. Um, and so, in my mind, it, it falls back to this idea of not making provisions for the flesh and fleeing things that could be a problem. Uh, and that a Christian really should not want to be, you know, walking close to that line. If you have a choice to stay away from it, why would you not stay away from it? Uh, and that's, that's a difficult uh, and unpopular thing to say in this. I mean, I understand where you're coming from. For the prom thing, I know that. I don't know how long it's been like this, but I know when I was in school, if you didn't go have relations with your prom date after prom, you were the odd man out. It's still like that prom. Well, I'm, I'm saying I, I know it's like that, and it's not getting any better, but I don't know how long it's been like that. Right. So we, but we still put, you know, we still have the same rules. Um, our same thoughts about school dances when you, when you when you break it down to elementary or you break it down to a lot of them have the father daughter dances and those usually are hosted by you know a school are we are, are we having the same rules for just any type of plan right. um, I mean I, I'm not familiar with the father daughter type thing I mean again some of it in my mind uh, Adrian's going to come back look at this passage here and. Philippians chapter 1 talks about approving what is excellent, being filled with righteousness. You know, the at least in my mind, it's going to be better to, to distance myself from those type things. Um, just because of uh, what could be going on. And I, the father-daughter thing, you know, I don't really know how that works or what I was involved with that. But I, I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable going to one of those with my daughter when she's old. You know, I just I wouldn't feel comfortable. Uh, I think that one of the things from a, a parenting perspective is if you know when they're little, then how do you, they get to a certain age and you say, well, it was okay when you were little, right. but now it's not okay. Yeah, and that's something you have to be careful of parenting. You, and I mean, no parent gets this perfect, I don't think, but you're going to, you know, I, I try to, in raising our kids, you try not to start something you're going to have to stop like. You know, what starts is innocent, and you have to stop it at some other age. You know, sometimes it's easier to just not get involved. You know, just explain to them early on, it's not a good thing to be involved with. Uh, we're not going to be involved with that. Um, and so, you know, some of that's just discernment, like discernment, I guess. Um, well, the Hebrews people are real cautious, you know, they say, well, I don't want to be called a Pharisee or whatever, you know, or, <laughs> you know, I don't want to buying too much but in the right. same case it is wise to err on the side of caution which is basically what you're saying you know am I gonna right. am I gonna move towards righteousness and excellence or I'm gonna, or I'm gonna move toward the middle so that I can be viewed as moderate or as reasonable is that my goal is to be accepted is is that right. approval 
uh, that I'm granting to other folks by my participation is that something that really is that something you really want to offer? And um, you know Hebrews chapter five, uh, thirteen and fourteen talks about exercising your senses to be able to discern what is good and evil. Um, you know what a Christian should be doing and should not be doing is not always spelled out in black and white in the scripture. We talk about that a lot. Uh, sometimes you kind of got to put the whole picture together and, and think about it on a deeper level and say, you know, okay, you know, there's some things that uh, may not specifically be thou shalt not or thou shalt, uh, but there's things that Christians probably doesn't need to be heading in that direction. Uh, and so, you know, I guess that's what I would end on is thinking along those lines. Uh, again, you know, I would agree with Chabelle. I don't think we can... We can sit here and, and say or that the scriptures teach that dancing in and of itself or every kind of dancing is, is inherently wrong just because it's dancing. I think a lot of it's got to do with uh, what, what it is, what you may be approving of or involved with or exposing yourself to or causing others uh, uh, to think or do. Uh, really, I think, weighs heavy into your decisions there. Any other questions? Alright, uh, if not, appreciate it. Let's all bow and I'll, I'll uh, have a closing prayer. <coughs> God and Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the blessings you've given us and for the time that we've had this morning to study from your word and to remember your son and his sacrifice. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to always have humble hearts and attitudes towards you and towards your word that we would be the type of people that seek and hunger and thirst for your righteousness and that uh, you would help us as we grow as your people, that you would help us with our discernment of your scriptures, help us with our attitudes toward accepting your teachings, and we pray that we would do those things in the right way. Lord, help us to grow in knowledge and in faith and in strength and in commitment to you. Just ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.